Hey there guys, I'm back to another game review. Today we'll be taking a look at Sonic Colors Ultimate on the PlayStation 4. It's been a minute since I played Sonic Colors for the first time back in 2010. I was only 12 years old at the time and that makes me feel hella old. Honestly, I don't think I played it since its initial release. So when they announced a remaster for the last generation of consoles, I was low key excited. I recently wanted to jump back into Sonic Colors to see how well it held up. So this was the perfect opportunity to check out the remastered version. However, if you've been paying attention to the Sonic Twitter sphere over the past month, you would have seen many clips fans have been sharing of the glitchy and buggy mess that is Sonic Colors Ultimate. The bugs mainly happen on the Switch port, which is quite sad to see. I know some Sonic fans only have a Nintendo Switch, so giving them the worst version of the three sucks. Then again, most of the time games get released on all three of these platforms, the Switch version gets the short end of the stick. Also, someone was faking the bugs by playing on a Switch emulator while passing their clips as genuine problems with the game. This obviously didn't make it easier for Sega to pinpoint where to start with their rushed remaster of Sonic Colors. I'll talk more about the performance issues with Colors Ultimate later in the video, so let's start with the game's very simple story. Sonic and Tails are stopping Dr. Eggman once again from doing evil deeds. The said deeds this time around involve harvesting these aliens called Wisp. The duo decide to stop the doctor's plans while saving the Wisps in the process. Very simple and easy story to follow. Nothing too crazy for those kids having this game be their first experience with the Blue Hedgehog. Back then, I thought this story was fine because it didn't stray too far from the norm of modern Sonic titles while satisfying a story that gives us a reason to go from level to level. Now, I pretty much feel the same way. The writing might be a little on the corny side for me personally. That could be me showing my older age of almost 23 but I fully understand how these jokes would land for the younger audience of Sonic the Hedgehog. The story of Sonic Colors Ultimate gets the job done once again. One of the worrying aspects of Colors Ultimate I had going in was actually the gameplay. You would have thought it would be the performance issues after seeing the various Twitter videos, but I wasn't sure if the gameplay would have held up from 2010. I mean, after the mess that was Sonic Forces, I kind of wanted to keep my nostalgia glasses on for Sonic Colors as one of the better boost formula titles. Well, the gameplay for Colors Ultimate holds up as much as I expected. Honestly, I don't remember a lot of the levels and how they played out. After the first two acts, I was, for the most part, replaying Colors Ultimate blind. In 2010, this was what the Sonic community wanted after the mixed reaction from Sonic Unleash. The daytime levels were good, but the nighttime levels were a chore. So, Sonic Team did just that by releasing a new Sonic game that was just daytime level gameplay while adding in the elements of the Wiss. For the most part, the gameplay of Colors Ultimate is what I remember. The boost formula gameplay is still fun to do. I still find it a little jarring that the boost meter only fills up with the regular wisps while the rings only act as protection from getting hit and stacking points. It makes sense for Sonic Colors because the wisps are sort of the quote unquote gimmick for this title, while in Sonic Forces, the wisps' inclusion seems a little unwarranted, and that's hopefully the last time I'm bringing that game up. The Wiss themselves are fine to use. I have mixed feelings on some of the Wiss having core moves Sonic used to do on his own, like Lightspeed Dash and the Spin Attack. I get it, they have to make the Wiss useful in the context of this game. Tying the pink and green Wiss to iconic Sonic moves gives the devs more time to develop the other Wisp. In theory, the yellow Scion and purple Wiss are fine abilities to use. Controlling the yellow slash drill Wiss does feel a little shaky at times, with the Scion Wiss blasting Sonic off in a laser. And the purple Wiss is just a Pac Man minigame for its duration. I admittedly enjoy using the purple Wiss far more than I've remembered. The blue and orange Wiss are kind of whatever. One makes blue platforms and the other one is just a rocket, so it's not much to really expect from those. The new Wiss ability introduced for Colors Ultimate, the Jade Ghost, didn't need to be added in my opinion. I feel like the core Wiss in the original Sonic Colors were fine enough as is. The Jade Ghost allows the player to phase into certain parts of the level through these portals. It's neat, sure, but I definitely soft locked myself in a level because I didn't know how to use the ability and there was no way out once the ability ran out of juice. I obviously became very cautious of how I use this Wiz power for the rest of my playthrough, but there's no reason to add a new power without fully testing it to see the possibility of breaking the game. It only appears in a couple of acts, but still, a power that didn't need to be added for this remaster. 
Other changes for this remaster is how one-ups work. Now they're called tail saves and Sonic will be placed back in his last known location. Checkpoints kind of become obsolete because of this change. Additionally, the game becomes super easy when you're just trying to get from point A to point B. Not to say some levels didn't challenge me, the final level did that for sure. However, I'm not a fan of the new life system. I wish there was an option to keep the old life system in as a way to increase the difficulty or just wanting to keep the lives how they were before. The remaster added a feature where the player can customize Sonic's look. You can change his gloves and shoes to a variety of colors, unlocking these cosmetics with the park tokens that are scattered across each level. Honestly, I had no idea these tokens unlocked cosmetic features until I finished my playthrough. I don't ever feel the need to change Sonic's look in the game, so I never bothered looking into it. So remember when I said the boost formula gameplay is still fun to do? I forgot to mention the big asterisk symbol next to that to symbolize when the level design allows it. The level design in Colors Ultimate isn't as simple as I remembered it. A lot of the time, boosting freely down a level isn't granted because of the level design. Not enough regular wisps for the boost gates to fill up, or I'm drifting across a level. There's far more platforming sections in Sonic Colors than I remembered back in 2010. I'm always hesitating my jumps during platforming sections too. It could either be my own ability being questioned, or me questioning how good the platforming mechanics of this game are. Regardless, platforming Colors Ultimate I found to be a little iffy. I never felt 100% confident platforming in this game. Thankfully, most levels can be completed within a couple of minutes. This can be a negative for some people as levels don't get a chance to quote unquote fully develop. There are six acts per world, so there is enough variety in each world. In my opinion, I'm fine with levels taking no more than five minutes to complete. The shorter levels that are less than two minutes could have been a little longer. I think Sonic Team heard the complaints from Sonic Unleashed where levels were extremely long and buckled down on creating quick, fast levels in Sonic Colors. If you want to play levels even faster, once you collect 15 rings in each world, you unlock Rival Rush. Sonic races against Metal Sonic to see who can finish the level first. Metal Sonic doesn't dilly dally around either, so make sure you're trying your best to finish the level as fast as possible. It's cool for sure and definitely gives me an incentive to collect more red rings. Speaking of the red rings, they're once again scattered throughout each level for Sonic to collect. I believe they even changed up the placement for this remaster, which is kind of neat creating a new collecting experience for those who played the original on the Wii. One last thing I forgot to mention, quick stepping in Sonic Colors Ultimate is still with the analog stick and not with the shoulder buttons. They could have added that as a sort of quality of life change because quick stepping with the stick feels hella awkward. I honestly thought it was always with the shoulder buttons, but I must be thinking of playing Sonic Unleashed on the Wii with the GameCube controller. As a whole, the gameplay of Colors Ultimate is still what I expected as one of the better Boost Formula titles. It's not as good as I remember, but I still had a fun time playing it. The Wiss abilities fulfill their role as the gimmick for this game. A lot of the changes and additions for this remaster, in my opinion, didn't need to happen. Sonic Colors Ultimate's gameplay still ranks true as a good Sonic game from that era. Performance wise, I already mentioned the glitchy mess that is the Switch version. I was seriously considering buying the Switch version as well for this video, but decided against it since I'm a broke college student. Personally, I experienced a couple of weird things happen during my playthrough. I already mentioned the Jade Ghost soft locking my progress during one of the levels. The Green Wisp messed with the audio in one level after I restarted it. One time when the tail save came through, he literally dropped Sonic outside of the 2.5D plane, causing Sonic to fall right out of the stage. And this happened twice, by the way. Right afterwards, the homing attack messed up and I had to platform all the way back up. Ironically, I didn't experience any graphical hiccups during my playthrough. I did hear about the PlayStation 4 version having a bug where your save file gets corrupted. Mine hasn't done that yet, but I believe they already patched that one out. Literally all the bugs and glitches I experienced were within the gameplay. Nothing wrong with the graphics themselves, it does look good for a remastered game from the Wii. Also the 60fps is definitely a nice touch as well. Music always hits with Sonic games and I was happy to hear the tunes of Sonic Colors once again. I 
I low key got goosebumps hearing the remix version of Reach for the Stars in the opening cutscene. That song was my jam when I was 12 years old, and I love it. The graphics, the music, and the overall performance for the PS4 version is alright. I'm aware the final product of Colors Ultimate isn't entirely the developer's fault, Blind Squirrel Games. People are theorizing Sega pressured them to rush the product out because they were already promoting it like crazy with the animation and such. Admittedly, a bit rough around the edges, so hopefully future patches can fix Colors Ultimate later down the road. In conclusion, Sonic Colors Ultimate is a decent remaster of a 2010 Wii title. I definitely wasn't expecting as many bugs and glitches for a remaster like this, but it does shine in certain areas. The game itself is still fun to play with the various Wisp abilities to your disposal. The graphics make Sonic Colors look the best it's ever been in high definition, and the soundtrack still holds up today. I do have my problems with some of the changes made for this remaster, and it sucks to see the bugs and glitches be present in all versions of this game, especially the Switch one. Still, Sonic Colors Ultimate stays faithful to the original with some rough edges on the technical side. Whether you should play this remaster version or the original is up to you. Sonic Colors Ultimate is available on the last generation of consoles, the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and the Nintendo Switch, so it's probably easier to buy the new one without having to dig up a Wii slash Wii U to play the original. So that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have not already, you can subscribe and put new videos up on a Saturdays. You can follow me on social media, Facebook and, and Twitter. I try to put updates to my future videos. Check out my podcast, the Travis and Amy podcast. We talk about games, movies, and anime every other week. And yeah, that is all I have for, for today. Thank you guys for watching this video once again. I'll see you guys next time with more videos.